Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. In this session, I will be discussing a very important topic that is the Devix disease. So, what exactly is another name of the Devix disease? That is the neuromyelitis optica. So, this Devix disease or neuromyelitis optica, it is an idiopathic inflammatory demyelinating disease distinct from multiple sclerosis, right? So, it is an idiopathic inflammatory demyelinating neuropathy or disease. It is an idiopathic inflammatory demyelinating disease. Right? And it is distinct from the multiple sclerosis. Okay? So, this neuromyelitis optica or Devix disease, it has the worst natural history than compared to that of multiple sclerosis. Actually, this Devix disease or neuromyelitis optica, it is a variant. Right? It is a variant of multiple sclerosis. And this neuromyelitis optica or Devix disease, it has the worst natural history than multiple sclerosis. Right? It has worse natural history than compared to that of multiple sclerosis. And this neuromyelitis optica or Devix disease, this is more common in females rather than males. Now, what exactly are the features of the neuromyelitis optica? So, in these individuals, there will be optic neuritis. And this optic neuritis, right, there are multiple manifestations out of which optic neuritis is one important feature. And this optic neuritis, it is either unilateral, right, or right, unilateral or bilateral. And this particular neuromyelitis optica, the optic neuritis, it is almost always acute. And not only acute, it is also very severe and may or may not be associated with retroorbital pain, right? So, that may or may not be associated with Right, may or may not be associated with retroorbital pain. And in these individuals, secondary to this optic neuritis, the visual loss is common. Right, the visual loss is common. That is what are, these are some of the features. Optic neuritis is one of the features of the neuromyelitis optica. Then these individuals, they also have the neurological dysfunction. <coughs> And this neurological dysfunction, you know, it will be there over several hours to days. And they have the neurological dysfunction in the form of motor abnormality. There can be sensory abnormality and then sphincter dysfunction right abnormality in the sphincter function so this will be the neurological dysfunction and apart from this motor sensory and as well as sphincter dysfunction these individuals also have fatal autonomic disturbances right and because of this fatal autonomic disturbances these individuals have orthostatic hypotension and apart from these the apart from these features the another i mean additional neurological features include lower brain stem involvement okay so right lower brain stem involvement can occur from contiguous 
cervical myelitis also that means along with the lower brain stem there is also involvement of the cervical spinal cord right there is also involvement of cervical spinal cord right and because you take in the lower brain stem that is like medulla oblongata you have the respiratory centers right you have the presence of respiratory centers and because of which the individual will develop respiratory failure right because of which these individuals will have the respiratory failure right and apart from that because of the lower brainstem involvement they also have nausea and as well as vomiting and there is intractable hiccups that means severe hiccups or also the manifestation because of the lower brainstem involvement and apart from lower brainstem involvement in some cases hypothalamus and as well as the other areas of the brain are also involved so even there is involvement of the hypothalamus as well so one of the very important manifestation is optic neuritis either it is unilateral or bilateral and then the individual will have motor sensory and sphincter dysfunction there is also autonomic disturbances and then these individuals and you know why there will be autonomic disturbances the autonomic disturbances may occur due to involvement of autonomic outflow in thoracic myelitis right in thoracic myelitis so you take this autonomic nervous system it includes the parasympathetic and as well as the sympathetic nervous system and what is your sympathetic nervous system your sympathetic nervous system is nothing but the thoracolumbar outflow and because of this thorac thoracic myelitis the individual will have fatal autonomic disturbances and there is also lower brain stem involvement and in some cases hypothalamus and other areas of the brain may also be involved and in these individuals they also have the diencephalic involvement so diencephalic in involvement may manifest as the hypersomnolence right will manifest as hypersomnolence that is increased sleep and even the narcolepsy where the individual will have drowsiness in the daytime and because of this diencephalic involvement there is also development of SIADH that is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone where there is excessive production of antidiuretic hormone then followed by that these individuals will also have menstrual irregularities because of the diencephalic involvement if it is in female okay so these are the features that you will have due to the involvement of the diencephalon next followed by that you have to understand that devic's disease it is associated with certain coexisting autoimmune conditions right it is associated with certain coexisting autoimmune conditions and these autoimmune conditions include systemic lupus erythematosus jogren syndrome juvenile rheumatoid arthritis graves disease and autoimmune hepatitis so these are the coexisting autoimmune conditions that you will see along with the devic's disease now how will you diagnose this devic's disease or neuromyelitis optica that is mri of the spinal cord will help in the diagnosis okay and in the mri of the spinal cord you will have the spinal cord lesions right and where is this spinal cord lesions that are being present right the spinal cord lesions are central contiguous and longitudinally extensive right central contiguous and longitudinally extensive right that is what is the distribution of the lesions and minimum there is involvement of more than three spinal vertebral segments right more than three spinal vertebral segments right 
that is what is the distribution of the lesion within the spinal cord. In contrast, in multiple sclerosis, the spinal cord involvement is peripheral and restricted. See here, the spinal cord involvement is central in case of neuromyelitis optica. Whereas in multiple sclerosis, the spinal cord involvement is peripheral and restricted only to one or two vertebral segments. Whereas in neuromyelitis optica, more than or equal to three vertebral segments are being affected. That is what is the difference of the MRI involvement in multiple sclerosis and a variant of multiple sclerosis that is neuromyelitis optica, right? The MRI brain abnormalities are present in many cases but are quite distinct from multiple sclerosis lesions, okay? Next, then followed by that, the if you take the diagnostic criteria, right? Diagnostic criteria, diagnostic criteria for neuromyelitis optica must required features include optic neuritis and transverse myelitis, right? Optic neuritis and transverse myelitis with MRI of the spine showing more than or equal to three vertebral segments, right? MRI of the spine showing more than or equal to three vertebral segments and the antibody should be positive. And what is that particular antibody? That is anti-aquaporin-4 antibody should be positive, right? And this is the MRI, right, where you have the involvement of C3 to C6. That means more than or equal to three vertebral segments are affected. And if you see the CSF analysis, right, the CSF will show you the presence of the oligoclonal bands. But the presence of oligoclonal bands in case of neuromyelitis optica, it is uncommon. But it is very common in case of multiple sclerosis, but whereas in neuromyelitis optica, the presence of oligoclonal bands are uncommon. But what will the CSF show in case of your Devic's disease or neuromyelitis optica? There will be neutrophilic pleocytosis. Right, neutrophilic pleocytosis, that is, there will be more than 50 cells per cubic millimeter. Right, more than 50 cells per cubic millimeter. That is what is your neutrophilic pleocytosis, okay. Right, that is about your CSF oligoclonal bands. And I said to you that these individuals, they are associated with some other autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus. So you can have the associated autoantibodies as well. That is the presence of anti-DS DNA if it is associated with system, I mean SLE, that is systemic lupus erythematosus, right? And there can be presence of anti-nuclear antibody, right? And there can be also anti-thyroid antibodies. Right, there can be also anti-thyroid antibodies. These are commonly present at the time of diagnosis, right? And another autoantibody commonly present in the serum is neuromyelitis optica IgG, right? So, right, other autoantibody is neuromyelitis optica IgG and this neuromyelitis optica IgG it is directed against the water channel aquaporin 4 right it is directed against the water channel that is aquaporin 4 Okay, and what are these aquaporins? Aquaporins are membrane water channel proteins important in maintaining the fluid homeostasis within the brain. That is what is your aquaporins, right? So these are all the other associated autoantibodies which can be present in Davig's disease. That is anti-DS DNA or ANA or anti-thyroid antibodies. And how do you treat these patients with the Davig's disease? See, attacks of neuromyelitis optica are more severe. Right, and these are less often steroid responsive. Okay, so we can give steroids, but they are less responsive to the steroids. 
right? But these attacks, they are very severe and they often lead to significant morbidity and mortality from respiratory failure, okay? So the cause of death in these individuals will be respiratory failure. And why there will be respiratory failure? That is because of lower brainstem involvement or because of cervical myelopathy, right? Cervical myelopathy. See, because of cervical myelopathy, you have to understand that the phrenic nerve, which is supplying to the diaphragm, has the root value within the cervical spinal cord, that is from C2 to C4 or C2 to C5. And if there is cervical myelopathy, the root value of the phrenic nerve gets affected and the nerve supply to the diaphragm is lost and thereby the individual can develop respiratory failure. So that is about your Devic's disease or neuromyelitis optica. So Devic's disease or neuromyelitis optica is a variant of multiple sclerosis. But you have some distinct features in case of the Devic's or neuromyelitis optica from multiple sclerosis, right? Like in Devic's, more than or equal to three vertebral segments are affected, whereas in multiple sclerosis, it is only one or two vertebral segments, they get affected. Right? And this is also common in females and even multiple sclerosis is also very common in females. The features in neuromyelitis optica which is required for diagnosis is there should be presence of optic neuritis. Right? Along with the optic neuritis. Right? See optic neuritis in this individual is so severe that the individual may develop visual loss also. Right? So along with the optic neuritis there should be transverse myelitis. Right? And the spine involvement should be in the form of more than or equal to three vertebral segments they get affected. Right? And CSF oligoclonal bands, they are uncommon but there will be neutrophilic pleocytosis in this individual. And they are less responsive to your steroids and it's a disease with high morbidity and mortality and mortality is mainly because of respiratory failure. That completes the discussion of this very important topic that is Devic's disease or neuromyelitis optica. Thank you very much.